So as I said earlier, last time we are doing soaking in this way, we will be soaking again, but uh, last time of this series before we then move towards the topic of outreach in the next few weeks. Um, but just a reminder of what I shared before our holidays, God was really speaking to me um, about outreach and he was really telling me, um, for one, that he wants us to take a step of faith, um, whatever that means to us personally and whatever that means for us as a church. Um, but I really believe that God wants us to change a few things and maybe also do a few things that might look risky in a worldly sense. And the other thing that I believe God was challenging us was to get out of our comfort zone and to really do a few things that maybe today we feel like, ah, I can't really do this or I can't, don't really feel comfortable doing this. Um, but I believe God is really challenging us to say, step up, do something new uh, in this new season. So um, uh, like I said, then next week we have the Sunday with Cecilia, but then from the, um, in two weeks we will definitely start praying into that. There will be some messages and of course also some praying time and so on. And I want to encourage everyone to really seek God, what that means to us personally and what he wants us personally to do towards this goal of reaching people for his name. All right, so that was the reminder. Um, today, like I said, is the last, last Sunday for now on encountering God with soaking, short message, and then afterwards, a soaking time. The topic, God is working for our good. And it will also lead into next Sunday's topic when we just talk about dealing with grief. It's related to that. Okay, so today's focus comes from Romans 8, verses 28 to 32. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom did he foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, whom he called, them he also justified, whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then, then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So that's our focus for today. Let me give a quick introduction before we move into soaking. It starts with a promise in verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Many of you know what happened to me and my family this past week. Um, it was frustrating. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it still was very frustrating. I wanted to drive to Croatia. Around one third of the way, our rental car started breaking down. We turned around, came back to Munich, got a new car on Monday, and we had to change our whole plan. And then we only made it to Bodensee. We didn't really get to, the, to Croatia as we originally planned. It was very frustrating. It was very disappointing. It was very sad. And it was like, why? Of course, in this kind of situation, you start asking the question, God, what are you doing? And why can we not do something like this? Um, such situation, this was a small thing, but many of you know um, what happened to some of us earlier this year. We all know how really stressful, how frustrating something can be when something really bad happens in your life. And we all know that such situations can really challenge our faith. It can really bring us to a situation where we start wondering what's going on. God, are you still good to me? Do you still love me? Are you punishing me? What I, what's going on? What's happening? If you're so good, if you're so loving, if you're so caring for me, if you're so powerful, then why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why am I suffering? Why am I sad? Why did I not achieve my goal? What's going on? Such situations can challenge our faith and it can bring us to a point where we might wonder, is God really good? But God's promise is, even in such situations, God is always working for our good. In all situations, 
in all circumstances, in all things that happen to us, good or bad, God is always working for our good. A couple of examples from the Bible where people went through terrible situations, but God was working. Think about Joseph, sold by his brothers, falsely accused, forgotten in prison, all kinds of things. And yes, Joseph had to learn a few lessons, and he did learn a few lessons through all of that. But still, he went through a lot of suffering, and he went through a lot of terrible things. But what happened in the end? He saved his family. And from our perspective, now looking back, he didn't just save his family. He saved the nation of Israel. He saved God's redemption plan. Because through him and through his uh, being sold and him going to Egypt and all those things, Israel survived, the, the family survived, the nation survived, and eventually Jesus was born through this family. In Genesis 50, verse 20, he said to his brothers, As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save many people alive. So in all the terrible stuff that he went through, God was at work, and God had a good plan. Think about King David. He did something really terrible was attracted to another man's wife, slept with her, she got pregnant, he tried to cover up. He said, okay, I'm gonna kill her husband, then I'm gonna marry her so that nobody will notice. God disciplined him, the child died. Terrible things, terrible what he did, terrible what happened to the husband, terrible what happened to the wife, terrible what happened to the child. All kinds of terrible things that happened because David sinned. And I certainly don't want to say that his sin was not serious. It was very serious. But God still used it. David and Bathsheba had Solomon. And through Solomon and his line, later on, Jesus was born. So I'm not trying to minimize his sin, and I'm not trying to justify his sin, and I'm not trying to say, well, adultery doesn't matter. It does matter. But in the midst of all the terrible things that David did and all the terrible consequences that it had, God was at work and God brought something good out of the situation. God is always at work for his people. In the good, in the bad, in the successes, in the failures, in the ups and the downs, on the mountains, in the valleys, God is always at work in your life, in my life. Sometimes it's really directly for us. Sometimes we are the ones who go through a season of suffering or who go through a season of difficulties, and eventually we ourselves receive the blessing from God through the situation that we are going through. Sometimes it's for us. Sometimes it's for others, through us. David, for example, certainly didn't enjoy his child dying but we are now the recipients of God working in and through David because Jesus was born through this, through this situation. But God is always at work, and God always does something for our good and for the good of others. We might not always understand God's purposes now. I don't understand why we couldn't go to Croatia last week, and I'm still kind of frustrated about it. I don't know why some Christians get sick. I don't know why some Christians even die. A friend of ours in Shanghai, they had, yeah, little Janie was two years old when she died of, of cancer, these kind of things. I don't know why this happened, and I don't understand. I don't know why some Christians have a lot more worldly difficulties than others and challenges, and it feels like their life is just a constant battle and that it looks like nothing good is coming out of it. It happens, but we can't allow these struggles to affect our faith. On the contrary, we need faith so that we can overcome these struggles. 
We need faith to be able to say, one day I'll understand the why. One day I'll be able to say, God is good, and I see now what he achieved in and through this situation, and now I understand why it happened, and I can say it was good what God did in the midst of suffering, in the midst of struggles. One day I'll see the bigger picture that I cannot see today. So yes, struggles, for some people, they decrease their faith because they say, I doubt God, I doubt his goodness, I doubt that he is for me, I doubt his power, I doubt that he cares for me. And for some people, struggles actually increase their faith because they draw closer to God. So how do we deal with these kind of struggles? Do we believe verses like verse 28, Romans 8, 28, that God is always at work in all situations, in all circumstances, and always for our good. So that's how he starts. Then he talks about our destiny, verses 29 and 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. We have to understand and we have to keep our focus. Our destiny is not this world. Our destiny is not to have a peaceful life and a happy life now. Our destiny is not worldly success. Our destiny is not worldly happiness. Our destiny is not to simply have an easy life here and now in this world. If we have, great, but that's not the purpose why God put us here. Our destiny is to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's who we will be. When we meet him, we will be like him. One day, we will see him face to face. We will see him as he truly is. And on that day, we will be transformed, completely transformed and perfectly transformed into his likeness as well. And until that day, we are in the process of being transformed. And that's what God is doing in your life and in my life today. That's why we are here. That's the purpose of us remaining on this earth for a time. And that's what we need to keep our focus on. And when we have difficulties, when we have struggles, when we face challenges, when things seem to go wrong in this world, we need, of course, we are tempted to look at these problems. And we are tempted to just make our world so small and think, oh God, I have this one problem, fix it. And we are not really able to look anywhere else. But Paul here is clearly telling us we can't get distracted by these things. Our focus must be, what is my destiny? And my destiny is being conformed to the image of Christ. And when I look at my problems in light of that destiny, then those problems look very different. And suddenly, we might be able to see a purpose and we might be able to see something in those challenges that we cannot see unless we really focus on our destiny. And then Paul concludes in verses 31 and 32, what shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God is for us, who can be against us? We all know it's a rhetorical question. Paul didn't really ask this question. He just wanted to make his point to them. God is for you. He is all powerful, powerful. He's all loving. He cares for every single individual. He cares for you. He cares for me. He holds the whole world. He holds all circumstances in his hands. What can people do against you? 
nothing. What can Satan do against you if you remain in Christ? Nothing. No power can overcome us as long as we remain in Christ. God is for you. God is for me. Nobody can be against us. And we need to live in this truth. We need to embrace it. Brace it. And we need to believe it that nobody can harm us. Nobody can touch us. And nobody can, yeah, can get us away from who we are in Christ. And how do we know that? How can we have an assurance of this? Of this? God already gave his best for us. He already gave Jesus Christ. He already gave the most precious thing he could ever give for anyone else. He gave his son for you and for me. He already gave everything and he never changes. Why do we now think that his goodness towards us ran out? Why do we now think that after he gave us his son, he now changed his mind and said, well, I gave you my son, he died for you, yes, but now I changed my mind, now I'm not for you any longer. It doesn't make any sense. The cross is not just a historic event. The cross makes God's power available to us today. And we need to live in this truth, and we need to focus on that. And then we will have the tools we need to deal with our ch worldly challenges in a different way. So Paul is reminding us through this passage, God is always at work in your life, in my life. There is not a single moment when God is not at work. Our destiny is not in this world. Our destiny is being conformed into God's image in his kingdom. And nobody and nothing in the whole universe can be against us or can stand in the way of God's plan to transform you, to transform me into his likeness. If we believe this, we will see our worldly troubles in a very different light. Like I said, our situation with our holidays was frustrating, but it's really a small thing compared to what some other Christians are suffering regularly or even on a daily basis. Next Sunday, we will be talking about dealing with grief. And we will be talking, we'll be giving an opportunity of really facing some of the things that happen, happened in our past or might be happening right now, where we really need to grieve over a few things. And maybe the, those things have affected our faith. Maybe those things have yeah, distorted our image of God or of who we are in Christ. But the foundation is really that we believe what Paul says in this passage. That we know that in worldly troubles, in worldly challenges, in all those things that we go through in this life, God is always at work. He is always at work for our good. Our destiny is not these problems, but our destiny is God's kingdom. And nobody and nothing in the whole universe can be against us or can destroy God's plan for your life and for my life. May we pray. God, thank you for that you have a good, a pleasing, and a perfect will for every single one of us. And thank you that even in these challenges, even in the frustrations, even in the anger, in the bitterness, in the grief, even in all those things, you're at work and you are doing great things in our lives, and you are transforming us into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. And what a privilege that is. What an honor that is, that you called us, and that you rescued us and saved us, and that you now give us the power. And yeah, everything, you equip us with everything we need. You have already equipped us with everything we ever needed to live a godly life. 
So, Father, we pray that you will help us today to really live in this truth, to stand on this truth, and to really, yeah, overcome anything that hinders us from living that kind of life. Help us, O oh Lord, to understand today if there are any misconceptions, if there are any lies from Satan that we have believed, if we don't trust who you are, if we don't really trust in the finished work of Jesus on the cross and we don't trust our own new identity in you, whatever is lacking, whatever lies, whatever is hindering us, help us today to really understand the truth, speak to our hearts, and help us, O oh Lord, to lay aside those lies and fully enter into that sonship that you offer us fully enter into that identity, fully enter into that, yeah, into that relationship and that you have for us and fully enter into all those blessings that you want to pour out on us. So help us understand and help us, Lord, to keep our focus on you and not on the troubles of this world. Change us, transform us, and make us more like you, Jesus for the glory of your name. Amen.
Thank mm-hmm. you.